The scripture is John 9, verses 1 through 12. As he walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud from the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We uh, are excited that uh, two weeks from this uh, today, uh, on the 17th, uh, we're grateful to have uh, Reverend Greg Kroger and Joyce Ann Kroger will be back with us. Uh, Greg will be uh, sharing in the message that day. Uh, we won't have a service at the park that day because uh, we'd like to have everybody here to greet them and, uh, and to share in that ministry that was shared when Greg and Joyce Ann were here. So we hope that you'll be able to make it and uh, be with them that week. Also, we uh, want to remind you that we are studying the Gospel of John, and we have uh, available uh, these uh, Gospel of Johns that you can read uh, along with us. Uh, that's been our theme through the summer. Uh, so even if we miss, uh, we invite you to read the chapters. Uh, today it's 9 and 10, and next week it'll be 11 and 12. And we also have a, a prayer that we encourage people to pray every day. It's a breakthrough prayer for this summer. Uh, and so we hope that you'll uh, pick one of these up. Uh, and in fact, we're going to begin uh, by sharing in this prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, breakthrough in our hearts and lives. We invite the gift of your Holy Spirit to speak to us as we read and experience the gospel story of Jesus. Walk with us through this summer that we may know you more fully and more deeply in our lives. We pray this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Well, we have to be honest, don't we, that we take for granted many things in our lives. And one of the things that we often take granted in our lives is the ability to see. Um, you know, if you really study how we can see in the mechanisms of our eye and the intricacies of uh, the cornea and the pupil and the nerves that are behind there and the retina. I mean, when you, when you see that or look at that, um, it is just a marvelous a thing in creation of God. Now, sometimes we get double vision and uh, it kind of looks like that. Uh, and there's another way of looking at double vision they're not really clear oftentimes what happens, but it's often one of the pieces of that whole integral process of how we're able to see is disrupted. And when it's disrupted, the eyesight is blurry, uh, you can't see completely, and it gets a little bit of frustrating and difficult to truly see. Well, today, as we talked about, we are continuing in our journey through the book of the Gospel of John. This is the... Uh, there are four Gospels, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and John is the latest to be written. Uh, John, the disciple, lived a very full and long life, and so this particular uh, material comes from when past the time of Paul's letters, and it's a time when the church was beginning to integrate both Gentiles and Jews into the life of the church. 
And part of, of the process of what we've been reading in the Gospel of John is, first of all, that John wants us to know who Jesus is, kind of experience the identity of Jesus. But not only the identity of Jesus, but to see who Jesus is as God's Messiah, the one who has come from God. And thus, when we hear an I am statement, that's another signal uh, that Jesus, when he says, I am the bread of life, or when he talks about today, I am the light of the world. That is a direction or a metaphor for us to understand something about our Christian journey, our Christian life. When Jesus says, I am the light of the world, he's reminding us that he has come to show us God, to show us how God would want us to live in our relationships with one another. Now, it's interesting in this beginning of the story, the question that the disciples ask Jesus when they discover this man who has been born blind they said, who sinned? Was it his parents or was it him? In that time, in that period, many times people thought that disabilities or, or struggles in life came because of sin. Something we did, something mistake that was made. And it's, it's interesting that Jesus begins to point us in a different direction. He's saying, well, not really any parent or he sinned. He was made blind so that God's glory could be shown. It's kind of a fascinating uh, way of changing what they had believed to be true. That if something bad happens to us, it must be God's punishment. But it, Jesus flips that on the other side and says, no, it's, it's an opportunity, it's, an, uh, it's a way for God to show us something new. To move out of darkness into light. Darkness and delight. I remember a few years ago, I was uh, we have I have an office down in my uh, in our home, and uh, there's not much light in there when I closed the door, and there was a storm going on, and then all of a sudden, you know, the electricity went out, and I've been I was in pitch dark. Now that first moment, and I don't care who you are, when it gets completely dark, you get a little nervous, don't you? I mean, when it is pitch dark black, I mean. You just can't see, and you're kind of wondering, kind of getting your bearings back, and it takes, in fact, it takes your eyes a while to adjust to see, well, what you can hopefully make out as you kind of wander your way through the house, hoping you won't trip over a cat or something else that might be in the way. There are times that we stumble in the darkness. There are times that we allow the darkness of our world and our lives to overwhelm us. But Jesus says to us today that I am the light of the world. That when we become followers of Jesus, we participate in the power of God's light in the midst of the darkness. God's light in the midst of the darkness. Now, as I had said earlier in other times that we've been looking at the Gospel of John, John, when he writes, uh, really writes uh, with two kind of things going along in the story and that's kind of the genius of it because what happens in this story is when this blind man is told to go and get healed he comes back and it's interesting how he has all these different encounters in fact there's in this whole chapter chapter 9 there are six scenes it's like a play there are six scenes in this play and it's interesting that first of all it's Jesus in the beginning <clears throat> with this man he heals him and then immediately he goes and he's healed and he goes and he sees his friends. And instead of his friends going, wow, you're healed, you can see again, what do they do? They go, well, how did this happen? Are you sure you're the same person who used to be the beggar? Are you sure you're still our friend that we knew before? Something's changed with you. Something's different. You can see now? Well, who did this to you? You know, it's interesting that his friends ask all these questions. They don't celebrate with him that he's been healed, but they continue to have a sense of wonderment about it and not complete understanding. They're focusing on the, the physical blindness of the moment. And in fact, the rest of the chapter continues with that because the Jews, the leaders of the church, are invited to come in. And of course, they begin to investigate because they're not sure how could he be born blind and how can he see now? How could, how could this happen? 
And so they interview the man. And then they interview his parents. Because they're not really sure he was born blind. And so they interview the parents. And then they bring this man back. And eventually, interesting enough, they said, you know, we're not too excited about what happened here. And so they put him out of the church. Fascinating, isn't it? See, there's two ways of looking at this story. There's two levels of looking at this story. First of all, there's the physical blindness. We get so narrow in our own sight lines that we can't see the bigger picture. And that's what happened in that scene. His friends, the religious people, the, the parents, they all were kind of focused on the how did this healing happen, which then led them to spiritual blindness. So we have this sense of physical blindness, spiritual blindness. Physical blindness versus sp spiritual blindness. And they kind of go hand in hand when we have a narrow view of how God-like can happen in our lives. That's what was going on. A pretty narrow view of, well, Jesus couldn't fix this in my life. Jesus couldn't come and heal anybody. How does this happen? How does this experience happen? Why is this happening to me? I mean, the series of questions that was asked in this chapter, it, it surprises us at the level of, where's the celebration of the healing that this man experienced? Oftentimes, friends, as followers and disciples of Jesus, we too have a blindness to the places where God can work in our lives. Oftentimes, God sends us somebody to speak a word of truth or speak to us in some manner. And what do we always do? We normally get defensive or we reflect it off. And it might be a way God's speaking to us and we've missed it because we were blinded by our own needs, our own wants, our own desires. The Wycliffe Bible translators tell a great story about being with a, a tribe in Africa, and all they were telling all these stories about Jesus, and it didn't seem like they were connecting until they got to this story. And it so happened that in this tribe, that the men of the tribe would challenge each other on who could spit the farthest. And if you could spit the farthest, that made you the, the lead person. I don't know why that would be, but that's how it worked. And when they heard this story where Jesus spit on the mud and mixed it up and then placed it on the eyes and then the man washed it off, the village was a buzz. Because it wasn't just the ability to spit, but to be able to to make a blind man see. Our God is a powerful God. And my friends, I think in our spiritual blindness, we underestimate the power of God, that God can work through each of us, that God can speak to us and strengthen us in our journeys of life and faith. Too often we are like many of the others in this scene. We we have our own kind of narrow understanding of God's love and presence in our lives. When Jesus says, I am the light of the world, move out of our darkness into Jesus' light. So often I think, friends, that we walk around as a fan of Jesus instead of a follower of Jesus. What I mean by that is, you know, we kind of hold Jesus over here. You know, when, when I need you, Jesus, you can come and be a part of my life. I, I will tell your story when it feels comfortable to me, as opposed to truly being a committed follower, a disciple who embraces the powerful light of God in the midst of the dark moments of our lives. In fact, the story I have decided to follow Jesus is basically around that. A missionary was being very challenged in his work and his response to those who were threatening his life. I have decided to follow Jesus. There is no turning back. I've made a commitment. I'm following fully. I'm all in. Are we blind? 
Are we blind? Do we live in that darkness of life? This passage, I think, challenges us to open our eyes, to see more clearly, to allow the light of God to break through in our hearts and lives, to see completely the powerful ways of God's work in our midst. If you ever take a tour of the Lewis and Clark Caverns up in Montana, they're in the northern part of Yellowstone, they take you down into the cave, and they do this in other caves too, I think. Whenever you do those cave tours, they love to shut the light off, and you know, you're in the complete darkness, and everybody kind of freaks out. And of course, this guy tells a story, and the story is, you know, a guy fell in here, and he was here for a week, and he kept yelling out, help me, help me, and it was pretty much complete darkness. And when he was found, a rancher came by and heard him and pulled him out of this cavern, this cave, and and he said, they asked him, so what kept you going for that whole week? And he said, you know, there was just this one small ray of light. One small ray of light that came in. And I kept focusing on that light. That was the hope that carried me through. My friends, let us open our eyes to Jesus to be truly not just fans, but followers of Christ. To be people who don't have double vision, but our vision is clear. That we can see with the power of God's love and light, God coming into our hearts and lives and celebrating the light of Jesus Christ each day. Let us pray. Open our narrow vision, O oh Lord. Open our eyes to see the power of your light. That when we live in the darkness and fear of every day, help us to claim your power. Help us to claim your word. And help us to see your light. Be the light of the world to us this day, O Lord. Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen.